here is the video doorbell camera kit from TP-Link. It's the Tapo D230S1. Let's waste no time. I'm gonna get it open and see exactly what we get inside the box. A template for the doorbell, stickers saying press here in different languages, warranty info and instructions, UK plug with the USB socket, Tapo Smart Hub, Ethernet lead, USB cable, an angled bracket, the power supply, what I'm assuming is for the hub, reset pin and screws, the raw plugs and screws to fix the mount to the wall, sticky pad, I'm assuming if you wanna stick the mount up rather than screw it, the TP-Link rechargeable batteries, and the video doorbell. Now that we've emptied the box, the next thing to do is to have a look at the quick start guide. It's not too long. So the first thing to do is to charge the battery. So we'll get the battery, the plug, and the USB lead, and we'll put them on charge. Now it says to put this on charge five to six hours before you use it. Now obviously, I'm not gonna do it for that long because I wanna make the video right now, but when you get yours, make sure you fully charge it before you first use it. So once your battery is fully charged, the next thing to do is actually put the battery into the video doorbell. Now I think I called this a reset pin earlier, but I've just read and it's actually to detach the bracket from the back of the TP-Link doorbell. So all you do, get your pin that is supplied, put it in the hole at the top, press down, and then the back should come off just like that. So you can see that the battery is gonna go in there and this will be your standard bracket that you screw to the wall. And then if needed, you can use the angled bracket, which looks like a wedge. You can screw those together and then screw both back to the wall if you need that angle when it's on the front of your house. And if you're just sticking it on, that's your sticker. You'd stick that on the back and then just stick that straight to a UPVC door frame. So this is the actual battery. When you plug it in, this little white line is actually an LED. So it will glow red if it needs charging and it will go green when it's fully charged. Now mine is still on the red, but I think it will work enough for us to do this demo. So in goes the battery. Stays in there quite well. And I won't put the back on at the minute because I can see there's some buttons on the back. Maybe we need to press them during the setup. You can see on the front, it's actually flashing red and green. So the next thing to do, if you haven't done so already, so if you haven't got any Tapo devices, is download the Tapo app from either the App Store or Google Play. Now I've already done three reviews on some Tapo security devices. Those ones over there. So we've got an outdoor 2K camera, an outdoor pan and tilt, and an internal pan and tilt. If you wanna watch those videos, make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel and you can watch them after this one. Which means I already have the app. So I'm gonna open the app up. As you can see down here, it says Tapo. And then it says, follow the instructions to set up the hub. We'll put the power cable in. So top right in the app is a plus symbol. We're just gonna press that. That'll mean add device. Whereas add device or add group, we're gonna add a device. We then have to find it. So it says doorbells. And then there's a selection of doorbells. We know that this one is the D30S1. So I can select on D230. Once selected, it said couldn't add device. A hub is needed before you can set up this Tapo device. Get started by adding the hub. So power up and check the LED. So it looks like we've actually got to connect this into the router. So get your RJ45 cable, plug that in. This then goes into the router. Now, I'm actually in my studio, in my shop, Waves in Ramsey, Cambridgeshire, and we've networked the whole place. So I don't have to go back to my router. I've got a socket just up on the wall there. I'm gonna go and plug this in, and then we'll carry on with the setup. So you can see here, I've just plugged it straight into my data cable, into the mains, turned them on, and we are flashing. So I'm assuming that's red or an amber and green. So on the app, it's asking already solid amber or LED not solid. So reset your tap device, use a pin to press and hold the reset button for at least five seconds until the LED blinks red. So that's what we'll do. So put that pin, which was used to take the bracket off the back of the doorbell, We'll hold that down five seconds to reset it. And that is a close up of the pin. You can now see that it's flashing red very rapidly and it's now gone solid. So in the app, I think it says amber, so I'm assuming that's meant to be amber, but it looks like red to me. Right, so it turns out that my socket on the wall isn't actually working. Maybe I didn't connect that one. We've basically got data cables everywhere in the shop and in all the offices in the studio. Maybe I didn't connect that one. So what I've done, the data room is next door. I've run a long cable all the way through. That's why the door, you can't see it, but the door's open slightly now to get my data cable in, put my mains cable in, and you can now see that there is an amber light. So when it first turns on, it's red, it then flashes red and green, 
and then it goes amber. So now if we go back to the app, I can now say already solid amber. It's asking to turn on location. I've just turned on location in the app. It's now looking for the Tapo device and it says found it. It then comes up with name your device. So it comes up as default as Tapo Hub 791A. I'm just gonna leave it as that. But obviously you can call it what you want. And it's asking where we're gonna put it. I'm saying study. You can then choose an icon. So I'm gonna just choose one of the doorbell icons. It's now coming up saying update the firmware. So let's do that before we move on. That has taken about three minutes. It's now complete. So just click at the bottom, sounds good. It's now asking to set up local storage. So actually on the hub, there's a space for an SD card. And you can put anything from an eight to a 512 gigabyte SD card in there. It's now explaining about hub placement. So I was thinking, so do you have to keep this by the router at all times? I wouldn't necessarily be very convenient if the router is not where you want this to be. Cause I'm assuming this is the chime as well as the main hub. However, it says at the bottom, I want to connect wirelessly. So I'm gonna click that. It's now searching for Wi-Fi network. So it will connect to my access point, which is above my head, which it's doing now. It's asked me to put the password in, which I've just done. Now saying connecting to the network and connected, sounds good. So there you go, that is now connected on my app. You'll see the other three are actually grayed out because they're in the box. So when I click into it, you can see flashing about, somewhere around here, it says tap here to add devices. So all we've done so far is connected the hub. We now want to add this to the hub. So that's the list that comes up and it says doorbells, the Tapo T30, which is this one just here. And now it's going through the setup. So it's saying, take the back off, put the batteries in next, wait 30 seconds. And it's on about the blinking. So it is blinking red and green, already red and green, enable pairing mode. So move your doorbell closer to the hub. It says within one meter, so I'll sit it on top. Remove the bracket off your doorbell, press and hold the sync reset button of your doorbell for one second and make sure the doorbell LED blinks green. So that is the smaller button just there. So not the big one, the small one. So I've just pressed the button. I didn't hold it down, literally just pressed it, released it. It is now blinking green, which is what we want. So I'll put it back on top. And at the bottom it says LED blinking green slowly, which it is doing. It's now saying connecting to the hub. They'll be talking to each other and hopefully it will connect straight away. Device added successfully. And I hope you heard that. It just said device added successfully. It's now asking you to name that device. Just comes up Tapo doorbell 3929. I'm going to leave it like that. You can name it what you want. I'm going to say study. Put it to doorbell. You probably put front door or back door whatever you're gonna put this, just so it's easier when you go into your app in case you have two doorbells and a couple of other cameras, name it so it's convenient so you know as soon as you look at it where that camera actually is. And again, it's asking to put an icon on, so I'll just choose car, that could be on the front door over a driveway. Almost done, click next. It's now on about the Tapo Care Cloud Service. So basically that means storage. So rather than using the SD card for storage, it actually store on the cloud, which is quite convenient, but you do have to pay for it. Now I did go into that in more detail on one of the other Tapo devices. I think it starts from £2.49 a month, and then it goes up per device you have. We're gonna skip it. But they do also offer a 30 day free trial, which I'd probably advise doing, because you can always cancel. So it now says complete, and it's saying mount your doorbell, or done for now. So I'm just gonna click mount your doorbell, and again it's saying charge battery first, and then you're gonna walk us through to find the desired location. So it's just gonna give you tips, I guess. Um, avoid direct sunlight, avoid obstructions left and right, keep the camera lens away from walls and glass to avoid flexion, avoid busy streets or leafy plants, keep away from metal doors to avoid affecting the signal. And then it goes into test Wi-Fi signal and preview. So then go through the mounting options, so either the sticker or the brackets, and then just guiding you through nice and simply. And then it lets you preview and tell you the angle looks good. So that's all set up. What we need to do is actually go and put this up outside. I'll do it on one of the doors at the back of the shop and we'll see how good the picture is. Right, now to hang the bracket. And there we go. Right, so everything should be working. If we press the doorbell, Hopefully, we'll get a notification on the phone. 
And there you can see at the top, doorbell ringing. So if I was quick enough and pressed it, you can then see what actually happens. So you've got voice call, end, quick response. So if we do voice call, we can then talk through the phone and that'll come out the doorbell. We can end call. And now I just want to show you what the quick response was all about. So if I press it again, so it's coming up like this. It was actually buffering. Um, that's my Wi-Fi connection. And you can have it say this. So I can put, click on that. So I don't know if you can actually hear that because it's quite windy outside, but the quick response gives you a list of pre-made sentences that your doorbell can say to whoever's standing there, like, I'll be there in a minute. This also has night mode settings. So we'll come back tonight and check just how good the night mode is. It's got a light built in, which should mean you get color at night if anyone was to come and press the doorbell. But we'll definitely check that out a little bit later. It's also a 2K doorbell, which means better than HD. And in the settings, you can change it. So you can have it on 720p, 1080p, and 2K. And the image that I've got is on the highest one, 2K. The only downside to that is if you've got an SD card in there, it's gonna use more memory. And same as your cloud storage, it will use more memory. But you've got a good camera, make sure you put it on the highest setting. What I'm doing at the minute is testing out the doorbell camera. I've put it on full color at night mode, which means a little light comes on here when it sees any movement. Right, so what I'm doing now, I'm walking towards the doorbell. It's on full color at night mode. So as soon as it sees movement, the light comes on the doorbell. And hopefully you can see my image quite clearly as I'm looking into the doorbell. Now I've had to put the camera on the middle setting. So it's not on the 2K, because as soon as I go towards it on 2K, I lose my Wi-Fi connection, which is quite frustrating, but hopefully you're still seeing a good image. And what I've just found on there is a spotlight brightness. So it's only on level two, it's now on level five. So hopefully it should be a little bit brighter, which means the surrounding areas should be in a better color than it was previously. Now in infrared mode, me just looking at my screen, you can see around the area a lot clearer than you can when it's actually the light shining at me. I think you can see the surrounding areas better. Obviously, I'm in black and white, not in colour. Now, the mode I've got it on at the minute is doorbell mode. So it's infrared, and when I press the button, it should, and it has done, turn the light on, which now turns it colour at night, which is kind of cool. I'm testing the picture during the day. Annoyingly, it's chucking it down with rain. So I'm just going to wipe the front of the camera to get all the rain drops off. But I just want to show how clear the image is during the day. We've done the night mode, done that test. But you can see it is a good, sharp, colourful camera with quite a long range on it. Obviously, I can only go back to the trees and you can see me over by the bushes. And if I walk all the way over here, you can see me. So it's got quite a good wide viewing angle. And if I just come back, look into the camera, you should be able to see how clear it is. Annoyingly, you might have raindrops back on it, but I think it's a clear image. Right, let's go inside and see what other settings it has on it. I'm inside, out of the rain, and I just wanted to clarify that the hub, which is also the chime, doesn't need to be hardwired into the router, only for the setup. So the whole tests I've been doing after I've had it wired in. I took that cable out and it's all been working fine. So it does work perfectly from wireless, but if your router is near, you can have it hardwired as well. So I just want to show you a couple of other icons on the app. When you tap the screen, it comes up with shortcuts. So you can click this bit what says 2K 5 megapixel, and then you can easily change to 960p or automatic. So you want to try and keep it on 2K if possible for the better picture. You've got over here your auto setting. So that goes from day mode, night mode and auto. This button here makes it to large screen. My phone's on auto rotate, so I can actually just move my phone and it'll do it anyway. If I tap it again, this one over here gives you multiple cameras. So if you've got more than one camera set up, you can have them on the screen at the same time. Other things you can do, which are pretty cool, is you can talk. So you simply press the talk button and then you hold down and you can talk directly into it. This is without anyone pressing the button first. So if you've seen someone standing out there, you can talk directly into your phone and it'll come out the microphone on the doorbell. So you can also set up detection. So this gives you alerts directly to your phone and you can do it for various things. So motion detection. So be careful with motion detection, especially like where I was 
out there because of all the bushes and everything. When it's windy, you'll just get that motion alert all the time. If it's pointing onto a road, cars go by, you're gonna get a notification. So be careful what notifications you use. Motion detection is fine for some areas, not for others. So then you've got person detection, pet detection, and vehicle detection. And you can turn these on and off simply in the app and you can also adjust the sensitivity. So if you did want motion detection, you could put that on, but then maybe turn the sensitivity down so it's not catching every bush or tree that's waving about in the wind. There's also quite a cool one, which is package detection. So detect in real time whether there is a package within the camera's view with the smart AI algorithms. Receive instant notifications when a package is detected if you have allowed notifications. The package should be left and set down within the camera's view. So that's quite handy if you have lots of parcels delivered to your front door and you're not always in, you can just tell the delivery guy, leave it there and you'll see it on your phone and you'll also get an alert that a package has been left. And if you wasn't there to actually talk to the delivery guy but they left the package, you'll have the alert from the AI algorithm. There are quite a few other apps and features on here but I think I've covered the main ones that you're probably gonna use with this doorbell. Now, if you do wanna know any more information about this doorbell, please let me know in the comments. So this really is a great video doorbell. Now the price does vary a lot. When I first ordered these in for the shop, they were 150 pound. They quickly went down to 119.99. We then had them on offer for 99 pound. Since that, they've now gone back up to 149 pound. I think at any of these prices, are quite a good value, but obviously if you can get it for 99 pound, that would be great. I will put a link in the description to our shop, which will be the best price online. Now, if you wanna watch one of my other videos from other Tapo security devices, I'll put a video on the screen now. And please, if you've enjoyed this video, make sure you are subscribed.